right, so first we're gonna create the shape of the lightning. Let's go into edit mode, scale this up. Let's make just a really rough lightning shape. Does not have to be pretty by any means. Let's add some edge loops by pressing Control R and let's press plus to increase the amount. Okay, cool, now we got some geometry. Let's just create some forks for our lightning. So do that, you can control click, scale it down, control click, scale it down, control click, scale it down, so 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 Okay, let's do it, let's just keep doing that. You can also extrude if you like. Control click. All right, now we got our rough lightning shape. Let's go in and scale these little points into points. If we go to individual origins, and then boop, cool. We wanna make this thing snap and crackle and pop. So let's go into the modifiers. First, let's add some more geometry with a subdivision surface modifier. This is going to give us some more faces to work with, but we don't want it to be on Catmull Clark because that smooths everything out. We want it to be on simple, which keeps the original geometry, just adds more faces. Let's go ahead and add a displacement modifier. We're going to be adding three displacement modifiers. The first one is going to be affecting the x-axis of the lightning and the second one is going to be affecting the y-axis, and the third one is going to be adding little micro bumps to it. Name this big boy bumps x, and let's add a new texture, and we can just do bbb x, and let's change that to x, so it's only affecting the x-axis. All right, let's uh, go into our texture settings, make sure you have big boy bumps x selected, and let's add a Veronoi texture. Let's increase the size to maybe five, maybe three. Three feels good. Let's do that. So the way we're going to be controlling the movement of these displacement modifiers is with an object. So let's go ahead and add an empty. Let's name it uh, lightning displacement controller. Cool. Now if we go back to our lightning modifiers and we change the texture coordinates to object, we can use this little eyedropper on this empty. Cool. So now if you grab the empty and you move it down, you can see oh, we're affecting the lightning. Cool. Let's actually add some movement to our empty by adding a location keyframe. And in the graph editor, let's take a look. We don't need the X or Y. We can delete those. For the Z location though, let's press N to bring up some options. Go over to modifiers, add a generator. Now you can see if we hit play, it'll go up, but that's not where we want it to go. So let's set the X to negative one. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now you can see we got some good movement on the X axis, but if we go to the Y, we got nothing. So let's pretty much duplicate this process for the Y axis. So let's go ahead and add another displacement modifier. Uh, let's name this big boy bumps Y. Let's add a texture, B, 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 Y, y. and direction, you guessed it, Y, y. Uh, texture coordinates, object, let's go and find that empty, all right, object, empty, cool, now let's go to our texture settings for B, 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 Y, and let's just uh, change these up a bit, get some variety from the X, cool. 2.5, 2.5. Now we got some nice big bumping going on with our lightning. Now that we got some cool squiggly wigglies, let's go ahead and add some tiny little baby bumps. Say rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Oh my God. All right, so let's add a new displacement modifier. Add a texture, uh, little baby bumps. All right, let's change the texture coordinates again to object. Select our little empty there. Then let's go over to the texture settings. Make sure you got little baby bumps selected. And let's go, I'm gonna go with clouds for this one. See how that looks. Change the scale. Uh, that feels good. Turn down the strength. Cool. Let's uh, turn smooth shading on so we get a better idea of what it looks like. Now that we got our lightning going, here comes the fun part. We're going to take each point of the lightning and we are going to assign it 
to an empty, and then we're going to randomize the location of that empty so we get some arcs like moving all over the place, and they're actually going to be able to snap to different objects. So, you know, the lightning moves over something and it, it goes onto that thing and it moves around. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so for this process, let's actually turn off our displacement modifiers. They're just going to confuse us. We don't need them right now. All right, so let's go into edit mode, uh, select one of our points here, and let's shift S, cursor to selected, go back into object mode, and add an empty. Scale it down a bit, maybe. And so we are going to, with the empty selected, select the lightning. And uh, let's just select this whole arc, and let's press Control H, hook to selected object. So that is going to basically parent this geometry to this empty. And you can see it's kind of moving the whole arc, which we don't want. We only want it to move the point and maybe trickle up a little bit. So let's go into the modifier settings for our lightning, which is where you can find the hook settings. And you can see we got some settings here, but what we care about is the radius. So you can see if we move this and then turn up the radius of the fall off. Ooh, dial that in. Now we got some nice smooth fall off for our lightning. So basically, repeat this process for each arc. It's kind of an arduous process, but it's worth it. Now that we have this moving properly, let's uh, actually parent all of these empties to the lightning. So when we move the lightning around, we move the empties around. All right, now let's add some randomized movement to these empties. So let's go into just one of them first. Let's go to the beginning, add a location keyframe. And if you go down to the graph editor, and open up this little panel, we can delete the z-axis. We don't need that one. Get out of here, you stupid z-axis. But for the x-axis and the y-axis, let's add some randomized noise. So we can go into the modifiers, add some noise, and you can see it's going to be real erratic, but if we turn up the scale, we can get it to chill out a little bit. And uh, so let's just turn the strength up to maybe two. Yeah, turn up that scale. Nice, moving around a little bit, feels good. However, in Hollywood lightning effects, it doesn't really move around smoothly. You know, it kind of snaps around to different objects and surfaces and things like that. So let's uh, add a stepped interpolation modifier, which will basically just make the graph blocky, which is a great way to describe it. Let's increase that step size, and you can see now we get some nice little chunky movements. We can actually just copy that, go over to the y-axis and paste it. Uh, however, let's change the offset a little bit just so it's not the exact same. So now you can see we're moving. However, it's pretty blocky. So let's actually turn down the influence of the stepped interpolation modifier. Use influence, turn that down to maybe that. Same for the x, turn that down. Cool, so now we have a little bit of smooth and a little bit of blocky. Looks good. So let's actually just copy these and paste them to all the other empties, uh, changing the offsets of both the noise and the stepped interpolation to get a little bit of variation. So let's add another keyframe. Don't need that. Paste that in there. Change that. Change that. Copy that. Paste that, change that, keep going, just doing it for all of them. Now comes the cool part, which is we're going to make these arcs, we're going to make them snap to our scene. Any objects we have in the scene, if you move the lightning over it, we're going to have it snap to the thing and stick there and then move around and it's going to look nice. Let's go ahead and make a little scene. So let's add a new plane. Scale that baby up. All right, let's go in there, add a cube. Let's make a table. Yeah, yeah, okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, add some of that, add some of that. Ooh, okay, yeah, add some legs. Oh my God, yeah, oh my God. I should put this on Turbo Squid thing, but like this is a really, a really good table. Cool, now we got our table and floor. I have to say, it's a, it's a great table. All right, so let's select one of our empties, go into the Constraints tab. Let's add a shrink wrap uh, constraint. And with our eyedropper, we are going to select our table and plane, connect it into one object, make sure they're in one object. And so you can see now, if we move our lightning around, ooh, 
we get some nice snappiness. Oh yeah. Cool. So now we could do the same process for each empty, going into the constraints tab, adding a new constraint, eye dropping the table, or we could be lazy and go up to edit preferences, search for the copy attributes, enable that. Then if we select all of our empties, selecting the one with the constraint last as the active object, we can press control C and copy object to constraints. Now, we got some nice snappy boys. Ooh, woo, woo, woohoo! Let's uh, go back, let's re-enable our displacement. And bam, we got some landing. Hell yeah, now let's make it look good. So, I'm going to be rendering this in Eevee. Let's make sure Bloom and Screen Space Reflections are enabled. And let's go ahead and add a material for our lightning. So let's add a new material slot, name this, uh, I don't know, lightning. Go into our shader editor. Let's get rid of that. Add an emission shader. I'm gonna do like 50 for strength. Change that a little bit. Okay. Looking sexy, nice. But you'll notice it stays the same brightness, which I feel like lightning should be very erratic. So let's actually add a keyframe to the strength. And with that node selected, let's go into the graph editor. Make sure the object is selected as well. Uh, let's go into here, add a new modifier, noise modifier. Let's make the strength like 500 or something crazy. Cool, that looks good. And let's actually add a limit so that it cuts off at a certain point. We want it to have a minimum value of 20. Right there in the graph editor, it's uh, cutting off at 20. Final little touch, uh, I'm gonna add some point lights parented to each empty just to give it a little oomph on the surface, you know, some surface contact light. All right, with an empty selected, I'm going to press Shift S, cursor to selected. That's gonna snap our 3D cursor to the empty. And we are going to add with Shift A, a new point light. Let's go ahead and make that like 50 change the color a little bit and let's go ahead and select our empty as well and parent it to the empty so now you can see we've got our empty moving around cool let's bring that back in how's it look pretty good except it's just one brightness value for the whole animation let's switch it up a bit select that light keyframe the power so press i go into the graph editor under power let's add a noise modifier Strength, 500. Cool. And then let's add a limit so it doesn't dip below zero. Limits, minimum Y of five. That looks pretty good. Now let's uh, go ahead and copy that light to all the other empties. So that's Shift D to duplicate, Shift click on an empty, selection to active, Control P to parent it to the empty. Let's actually go into the light and change the offset a little bit just to randomize it cool let's do the same for all of our other points shift d shift click shift s selection active control b nice let's change that offset a little bit <clears throat> all right so we're looking pretty good we have some nice reactive lighting but i'd like to add some sparks so let's go ahead and do that if we select the lightning go into our particle settings add a new particle system name that sparks then we press play you can see we got sparks emitting from the whole thing which we don't want we only want it uh, emitting from the points so let's go into edit mode let's select these faces let's add a new vertex group name that points click assign in our particle settings let's go down to the vertex groups for density let's add points so now it only emits from the points you can see it's falling right through the floor. So let's actually select the floor, go over to the physics settings, add a collision. So now, looking good. However, the lightning's kind of pooping out these particles. I'd like to add some, uh, you know, variety and some randomness to it. So let's uh, go into the particle settings under velocity. Let's add some velocity in the z-axis. Make it shoot up a bit. Cool. Add a little bit of randomness. Cool. That looks good. Um, but now if we set it to render view, we're not going to see anything and that's because we need to assign an object to the particle system So let's create that object. Let's go over here 
add a new icosphere. Let's make sure the subdivisions are at one uh, so we don't have too much geometry bogging down the scene. And let's go ahead and create a new material called sparks. I'm just gonna have a simple emission shader. So let's go to rendered, make it like an orange or something. That looks pretty good. Cool, so now under our lightning particle settings, let's go down to render, set it as object, and we can eye drop this little spark right here. And boom, we got some sparky boys. Let's turn on the scale, maybe add some scale randomness. So there you have it, reactive lighting straight out of Blender. Feel free to leave a comment suggesting any more tutorials you'd like to see, and hope you have a great day, I'll see you next time.